do you suffer from acidity bloating or constipation often and you feel it's normal and are you fed up of taking medications like antacids anti acidity pills eno pantacids etc then this video is especially for you hey this is akil nirugatti i'm a holistic nutritionist disease reversal expert and a holistic cancer coach i'm on a mission to help about 100000 people to lead a disease free lifestyle through holistic nutrition and achieve a life of disease free and achieve at most longevity so today i'm going to discuss about a topic which is pleading many people in this world secretly they don't tell you this is primarily acidity so we are going to learn about how to fix acidity naturally right any kind of gut issue be it constipation be it bloating be it acidity be it stomach cramps be it food allergies be it food in- intolerances are not normal okay they should not be taking uh, they should not be taken lightly because these can lead to serious consequences further according to ayurveda or according to ancient sciences of indian culture it is said that all diseases start in your gut that means all diseases start in your stomach because that's where the food absorption starts and all these things so today we are going to learn about what is acidity why people are exp- experiencing acidity acid reflux heartburn not able to digest food properly constipation constipation bloating or something like that so if you are someone who is suffering with this condition stay tuned for till the end this video is going to help you a lot okay so before understanding how to heal the acidity we need to understand that what are the exact root causes of acidity that's a crucial point we need to understand because finding the root cause is healing halfway through right so the first root cause of acidity is low stomach acid right many people mis mis uh, misunderstand that it is because of high stomach acid they they might think that we have high stomach acid that's why we are not getting uh, 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 we are getting this acidity or blow acidity or uh, acid reflux or burning sensation in the stomach but that isn't true okay acidity is primarily because you have low stomach acid when i say it is it is low stomach acid less amount of good acid what is good acid it is hydrochloric acid we all learn in childhood that hydrochloric acid is produced by our stomach to digest food properly so you will be having low less amount of hydrochloric acid if you're having less amount of stomach acid then your food is not going to be digested properly and the food can come up to your uh, esophagus or to your food pipe without because it is not being dig- digested properly we'll learn about these things in the later part of this session no uh, you know so you need to understand that if you are having less of good acid which is hcl of course there are bad acids too bad acids are produced by pathogens bacteria and other toxins kind of stuff or if you are eating wrong for or something like that so primarily if you are having low stomach acid then you are you will get acidity okay because what are the root cause of low stomach acid it can be numerous amount of uh, you know root causes of it because a uh, high fat diet high protein and high fat diet from long amount of time heavy amount of processed foods uh, not able to you know not sleeping properly these all can be the root cause of low stomach acid okay this is the first root cause why you might be getting acidity okay let's dive into the second root cause is a predominantly high fat diet as i said previously also high fat diet a high fatty food which is combined with a protein intake is very hard to digest for your stomach that's why you often see that meat takes a longer time to digest for you eggs take more time to digest for you but when it comes to vegetable and fruits vegetables and fruits which is vegetarian uh, diet predominantly ha- will take much less effort from your stomach and it requires less amount of stomach acid when compared to the meat or something like that so if you take any kind of meat be it chicken be it uh, fish be it mutton or something like that it is pro- it, obviously people say it is high in protein but you should also understand that it is also high in fats so when you are taking foods that are combination of high fats and high proteins or a complex kind of thing so that requires more amount of uh stomach acid and also for protein to digest you need an enzyme called pepsin which is produced by your stomach hcl if the hcl is not produced properly the pepsin which is which is responsible for breaking down the protein digesting the protein is not also go- also it's also not going to be produced that's why you will get insufficient amount of stomach acid and you you can also get that uh acidity kind of feel or heartburn final kind of feel not just that for our food pipe and for our stomach there is a connection which is called sphincter 
for example once the for example let's say this is stomach once the food enters into the stomach right from this food pipe <clears throat> it it has to go into the stomach there will be a small wall for this food pipe that's that wall is called sphincter as soon as food enters into the stomach from the food pipe or esophagus this this wall should be closed else the food can come into the uh, food pipe or esophagus it can cause trouble which is acidic food because it's mixed with acidity which it's mixed with acid right so this wall should be closed as soon as food enters your stomach but when you are consuming animal based fat especially dairy products milk products uh, chicken or mutton or fish especially animal based fats when they are heavy or even let's say even if it is plant based fats like if you're using more vegetable oils more uh, more oils in your food this wall is not going to be closed properly okay this wall is not going to be closed properly when this wall is not going to be closed properly the food can enter your esophagus and food pipe and you get you can get that heartburn situation or acidity or acid reflux situation in that particular time as well okay so that is why a high fat diet can lead to this sort of thing okay so next let's go to the next root cause which is a fatty liver if you are having a fatty liver then you there is there are high chances that you might have low stomach acid there are high chances that you might also have acidity or bloating or constipation because the the reason is because when you have fatty liver especially fatty liver is because of when your liver is performing slowly your your, your liver is sluggish because of because it can be of many reasons it can be predominantly high fat diet or it can be your liver is clogged with lot of uh, toxins or something like that okay when you have this kind of fatty liver your liver cannot produce bile properly so bile is a, a secretion which is secreted by your liver through gallbladder to digest the fats so bile is the one which digests the fats properly so proteins and carbohydrates are digested in the stomach but when it comes to fats it it needs to be digested by the bile in the duodenum okay so because of that when you are eating high fat diet okay consistently regularly your liver loses capacity to produce bile regularly okay so your liver will 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 suffer to produce more amount of bile because it it do not require high fatty foods each and every time so when that happens your liver's bile is directly proportional to your stomach acid if your stomach acid is strong your liver's bile will also be strong if your liver's bile is strong your stomach acid will also be good but your liver is struggling to produce bile because of high fat diet your stomach is also going to suffer because you're not getting that uh, the stomach is not able to produce that hydrochloric acid and in a enough manner so that is why you can feel acidity or bloated or a uh, feeling of heaviness when you when you eat this meat or animal based food or high fatty foods normally so a fatty liver can also be a root cause of acidity so we also need to fix that too right so next root cause is deficiency in enzymes you need to understand this carbohydrates are digested by amylase protein is digested by protease fats are digested by lipase and there are also other enzymes as well which are in the stomach which are very important for assimilation and breakdown of the foods so when you have less amount of stomach acid as i said before your stomach acid is responsible for breaking down your protein as well because your stomach acid hcl also hcl when the once the hcl is produced produced your stomach glands also secrete an enzyme called pepsin pepsin is an enzyme which is responsible for breaking down the protein molecules okay so if pepsin is if pepsin only produces when hcl is high if hcl is not producing properly this pepsin is also not going to produce properly then you cannot digest your proteins that is why people when they eat dals when they eat lentils or pulses or meat or something like that they they feel acidity gas or bloating or something like that many people understand this when they eat chole or chickpeas or rajma or kidney beans people find it difficult to digest because they are bloated and they are gassy because the enzymes in them the stomach acid in them is not producing properly so this is the reason for that okay so we need to fix that enzyme deficiencies as well okay now let's go to the next reason which is bacterial infections especially Uh, to talk uh, literally it is a bacterial infection of strep or e coli you might have heard about people uh, 
पीपल गेटिंग डायग्नाइज विथ ई कोला इन्फेक्शन और स्ट्रेप इन्फेक्शन बेसिकली दीज आर बैक्टीरिया विच आर गोइंग विच विल बी देयर इन योर स्टमक और लिवर वॉट एवर इट इज दिस दीज बैक्टीरिया विल बी देयर फॉर लॉन्ग एंड लॉन्ग एंड फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम Uh, if they are in your in your body for long time these start to create bad acids which are foul in nature which are which are gassy which are which are not good for your stomach so when you eat food especially which is cooked a lot it is having high fats you know it is rotted uh, you know it is it is cooked very heavily in high temperatures then if you eat this particular food this bad acids you know flush through your stomach and they this bacteria and all these things feed on them because if there is no good good amount of hcl good acid then the food is rotted okay the food rots slowly and then this rotted food enters your intestines okay and the food gets fermented and rotted and this bacteria and viruses feed on them which are unproductive bacteria especially not the good ones obviously so these this create excessive gas which is uh, foul gas rotten rotten gas and all these things this, this can create uh, acidity kind of feel or acid reflux kind of feel or heartburn or something like that so this is a, uh, this is the next reason okay now that let's go to the next reason next reason is stress so many people might tell you that eat your food calmly eat your food by sitting down or sit, whatever the place you prefer Uh, in a good environment where there is no stress there is no distractions for you a lot of distraction be it in a peaceful environment that is because our food is only digested in those in that kind of environments because we expect food when there is no external threat to us for example let's say you are under huge stress let's say there is a dog behind you okay there is a dog behind you which is coming to catch you at that time your your body will not expect food from you right in the in the time of stress your body produces an hormone called adrenaline adrenaline is a hormone which is which is called also called as flight or fight hormone that means when the dog is behind you either you have to run away from it or you need to fight fight it okay at that particular time your body requires highest amount of energy which is coming from adrenaline which is the stress hormone right at that time your body do not need any food because if you are taking food it need to digest and it need to uh, you know assimilate and give you energy that is your body obviously is not going to do then the same applies when you are under stress when you are in tremendous stress or when when you are in a hurry your food your your stomach will not produce enough hcl and you can feel that you can get at acidity or something like that. that's why when you when you are in a hurry and you eat you gulp down your breakfast or something like that so you feel undigestedness uh you know acidity or uh, a bloating kind of thing because the acid levels are not high at that particular time so that is why always eat your meals stress free uh you know find a good place where you can sit down and eat your meals uh, peacefully uh without any distractions of your phone or laptop of your work so preferably without a tv or something like that but if you are if you if you are willing to uh have uh, you know watch some uh light hearted shows or uh, a music music shows that's absolutely fine okay now let's go to next root cause which is nutrient deficiencies so you need to understand that even if we have a nutrient deficiency in our body even even if it's even if it's one nutrient deficiency our body in our body our body tends to dysfunction so our stomach acid is made by some nutrients like zinc potassium vitamin b, uh, b vitamin b complex like b6 b9 and b12 and something like that okay if we are not getting b complex vitamins zinc mineral and potassium mineral and magnesium and other stuff as well so our body will not be able, will not be in a position to able to produce hcl because hcl is made up of these kind of uh, uh, nutrients so it's so it is important if so if you are zinc deficient because majority of people are zinc deficient today and if you are deficient in vitamin major vitamin b uh, major vitamin b complex vitamins so then you will have a problem of acidity or a bloating or stomach cramps or something like that or inability to digest kind of things okay so these are the uh, major root causes of acidity of course there are other root causes as well like medic overuse of medication so there are some medication where uh, you are you are given to take uh antacids okay you might have seen this that when a doctor prescribes you a medication if it is high dosage or it, it's a powerful medicine doctors also give antacid with it that is because it can 
it can develop acidity in your stomach and this antacid will again go and disrupt the acidity you know destroy that acid that means even before that also you are producing only little amount of stomach acid which is good stomach acid even that also is curbing by this antacids that is why i would not recommend any of my clients to take antacid pills like as you know uh, eno uh, baking soda or antacid pills like pantacids or something like that so which are pres- uh, which are in the medication shop people normally take it what is what is what is this primarily doing means so you are you are already having less stomach acid for example let's say you ate a food you ate some food whatever it is and then you are feeling that acidity in your stomach at that time your stomach acid is already less and then once you take this antacid this acids will also go down of course it will also it will also make bad acids to go down and also it will kill the good acid also to go down so eventually what happens you t- you daily take the antacid because you are feeling that acidity symptoms and then at there's a there, there 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 will be a point where after some days you will feel that your food is rotted you're getting more gas you're getting constipation you are getting bloated you will have nutrient deficiency because this food is not digested if the food is not digested the nutrients are not going to be absorbed so that is why we should not be relying on antacids and uh medications which which disrupt this stomach acid okay so be careful with that so now we'll talk about finally how to heal okay this is the most important thing this is for this you you might have come here so how to heal this acidity condition so many people go through this many people have this particular disease a particular kind of condition um, coupled with bloating coupled with constipation coupled with diff- different gas you know gas kind of issue or something like that which is not a which is not a good thing to go for okay so how to finally heal the first thing you need to do for you to heal is reduce your fat intake that is the important thing which you need to understand so you need to reduce overall fat intake in your day for example if you are using more cooking oils in your food reduce that if you are eating more uh, meat or more eggs or more animal based fats or dairy products or something like that minimize that reduce that or completely remove it if possible for some days if so if if it is okay for you okay so because once you reduce fat the uh, the hcl will be produced more because it's if, because it becomes very easy for your stomach to digest the food which is uh, which is away from fat and also it is a huge relief for your liver because your liver need not produce bile again and again to digest this particular fat right so your liver gets a good break for it okay so that is why you need to reduce the fats okay now let's talk about foods that heal you foods that increase your hcl foods that that can get you away from this particular acidity condition so first thing you need to reduce the fat and you can include this particular foods that are listed in the on the screen for example let's say lemon water is a greatest source to increase hcl so lemon water is free of fats it's full of nutrients it's full of vitamin c it is full of sodium so, uh, sodium salts which are required for your uh, hcl production a lot of i know it also it also has a tendency to detox your liver to detox your intestines so that you can pass your stools properly so have a, have good have a lemon water which is normally in room temperature you, it's important you need to consume room temperature lemon water you can squeeze lef- only fresh lime in that of course you can add a little bit of good organic honey that's absolutely preferable okay so then ginger tea so for example people for example if you have any confusion or if you have any uh, if you are skeptic that if i eat this particular food for my lunch after that i after this i'll definitely get acidity so before 15 minutes or before half an hour of that meal try to consume ginger water or ginger tea when i say ginger tea i'm not talking about the milk Uh, ginger tea i'm talking about the ginger tea which is made with pure ginger and fresh water so how to make this ginger tea is it's quite simple take uh, take a bowl and put uh, put some put a cup of water in that and put and uh, get it to boiling temperature once it hits the boiling temperature turn off the stove and put a dash of ginger mash it and put uh, put it in that uh, kind of water and just steep it let it brew for about 10 minutes and then you can uh, you know strain it and have this tea ginger has a tendency to and capacity to increase the stomach acid as soon as as soon as you ha- you take this ginger tea obviously many of people find 
uh, find them themselves getting hungry as soon as that because it initiates the fire it ignites the uh, stomach acid in the stomach okay so take ginger if 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 you are skeptical about you will get acidity after lunch after lunch or after dinner or something like that before taking that meal include ginger tea so that is the best thing that you can do okay so now let's come to next next uh, food which i mentioned is fennel seeds fennel seeds is basically somp okay somp or fennel seeds so for suppose let's say you are having you are getting that acidity or getting that acid reflux currently after having particular meal after some time after uh, having a particular meal then what you can do is chew on some fennel seeds take one spoon or two spoon of fennel seeds and just put it in your mouth and chew on because fennel seeds are great to reduce the acid reflux symptoms are great to reduce acidity they will calm your stomach at, at the same time increasing the good hcl acid okay so include fennel seeds if if you are uh, having acidity if you have acidity or do not have acidity also try to include some fennel seeds after your meal because this ensures your digestion is proper and also it will also help you in you know it can also act as mouth freshener or something like that it also has some antioxidants and lot of other disease healing properties okay next particular food is celery juice okay celery juice is one of the uh, important one of the highest rated foods on this planet to increase the hcl and it is also helpful in different kind of issue different kind of diseases it can reverse this kind different kind of diseases but the only thing i have mentioned it in the number 4 is especially because it is not frequently available in india in all places of course it is available in tier 1 and tier 2 cities but uh, that to not that often but if if you people get it that's a wonderful thing that you can get it for your stomach as soon as you take the celery juice your stomach acid will increase you will detoxify you can you you may want to go to washroom to detoxify that kind of whatever the junk you have stored in your intestines so celery juice is one of the best foods to raise your hcl celery juice one uh, the hierarchy is like this first the celery juice raises your hcl then the lemon water then the ginger then the no no fat foods or something like that so how to make celery juice basically take some stalks of celery like uh, four to five stalks of celery remove the leaf part and put it in juicer and just you know uh, you know drink that juice on an empty stomach or away from your meals so so you should not be consuming any foods prior or after a two celery juice at least 30 minutes okay the same applies for the lemon water as well okay so if you're not having juicer you can also use blender too and strain it and that's up to you so you can do that as well okay so next uh, next nutrient is magnesium okay so normally when people have acidity or something like that if you go to a chemist shop they will either give antacid or they might give magnesium oxide magnesium citrate magnesium glycinate all these are good for curbing acidity or something like that but this magnesium i would only recommend you when you are having severe acidity because magnesium also curbs down the stomach acid levels but magnesium is important for health okay so that's why whenever you are having magnesium for your health if 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 you are suggested if you are prescribed with a magnesium supplement by your health professional or nutritionist then obviously you should you should be taking that magnesium away from your meals or between your meals or before bed okay but i would only recommend magnesium if your stomach acidity levels are if your acidity is worse so for example if you are traveling somewhere if you are on a bus or a car or or a train or something like that and you are facing acidity issues and you don't have any other foods which can curb it so that the time you can pop a magnesium pill or something like that that can be a handy for you okay now let's talk about pineapples and papayas so these are some of my favorite foods because pineapples especially contain lot of enzymes living enzymes that will that are required for your stomach especially when i talk about pineapples they are rich in producing pepsin in the stomach so that means people who are who have inability to digest protein when they take dals when they take high fatty foods when they uh, when they get that uh, kind of um, gas or something like that give them give them pineapple okay add pineapple into their lifestyle pineapple ensures you are getting enzymes that are required for bro- uh, bro- breaking down of proteins and fats or something like that okay and pineapples are rich in vitamin c and nutrients and obviously they are very good for gut very great for stomach acid and all these things very great for our stomach acid and our stomach enzymes and then comes papaya is one of my favorite foods papaya is one of the gut healing food it is not just helpful for acidity it is helpful for 
bloating it is helpful for constipation it is helpful for people who have crohn's colitis ibs ulcerative colitis celiac disease um you know a diverticulitis any name any kind of uh gut issue stomach issue papaya is the is a rescue for them because papaya is soft papaya is good in nature papaya has lot of nutrients antioxidants vitamins and minerals that are helpful to heal your stomach and gut issues it is very soft very very uh, gentle in nature it 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 travels through your gut intestinal wall very gently and and also same at remo- removing the toxins people who have constipation the clients who have come uh, who, who work with us for constipation and acidity we definitely recommend them papaya and papaya sp- we recommend them papaya smoothies papaya fruit or papaya in some other forms all of them have seen tremendous benefits with papaya people who are uh, especially with the people who have acidity constipation or bloating because papaya is w- one of the wonderful foods for your gut healing so include papaya okay include pineapples okay include lemon water include ginger tea include fennel seeds include celery juice and in- you can also include all the fruits and vegetables okay make sure that th- those fruits and when you're consuming these fruits fruit should be consumed alone they should not be mixed up with uh fats or protein they should not be mixed up with nuts or seeds you might see a, a, a you might see a trend these days which is going on that you should consume um what is that uh nut signed fruits fruit and nut to balance your blood sugar levels but that is not true that is not going to work okay because we can talk about that that will lead to insulin resistance which i spoke in the previous my previous videos you can check out them too as well so these are the foods that can help you heal okay so if you are liking this video if you like the stuff that which can be helpful for you please make sure to subscribe this video uh, so that is a thing so to uh, wind it up reduce your fat intake increase your vegetable and fruit consumption okay um, you can add lemon water ginger water fennel seeds celery juice papaya pineapple strawberry and also i forgot to mention citrus fruits like lemons oranges uh and also vitamin c rich food like strawberries berries blueberries uh, blackberries all these are very good at producing hcl very good at healing acidity and all the gut issues and all these things and one more point that i want to mention here is that if you are facing any difficulty by having this kind of food for example some people might find it difficult uh, when they are consuming lemon water because some people might get, might ha- might have a sensation that lemon water might be ex- you know uh, you know aggravating their acidity symptom that is not true because lemon what it what lemon water does is once it goes into your stomach it pulls the viruses and bacteria which is uh, which is affecting your gut so once it pulls out uh, pulls out as soon as possible when it when you are consuming more lemon water or more celery juice more amount of toxins are coming out so this can create some acidity kind of situation or a bloating or a constipation or you might want to go for washroom that's absolutely fine that it indicates that this particular foods are working and it will definitely help it, it they are definitely helping you so in that case if you're not able to tolerate that kind of flare ups then start slowly so lemon water always have it in empty stomach or away from the meals okay for example if you're not okay with one full one full squeezed lemon water you can go with half lemon water squeezed if you're not okay with taking celery juice of 250 ml of celery juice just go with 100 ml just go with 50 ml start off slowly when you start off slowly this toxins and bacteria and viruses come out very slowly that can be a gentle for your detoxification and it, it may not hurt it may not give you so much flare ups okay so this is the these are the thumb rules that you need to remember okay so please make sure to subscribe to this channel which can be helpful for me to this to do this kind of content and help you and add more value to your life okay and check out my instagram profile where i'll be posting daily kind of content which can be relevant which can be helpful for you and if you want to learn about how to lose weight or how milk is very dangerous for you the videos are here you can click there and watch them and subscribe to this video and thank you so much we'll meet in the next video thank you